There are two kinds of communication that you want to engage in while you're working through a data analysis. This lecture talks about the more routine kinds of communications that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Communication is fundamental to good data analysis. Uh, that's because data analysis is a, is a highly verbal process and it requires regular back and forth and discussion to kind of move the process forward. Um, and in this kind of setting, both informal and formal communications are very important. Um, and you want to be able to coordinate communication between team members or with yourself uh, to make sure that the process is constantly moving forward. So this, in this lecture, I'll talk more about the kind of routine communications and the purposes of those routine communications as the data analysis process project moves, uh, moves forward. So uh, routine communication is an important tool for performing any good data analysis. Um, and and it's, it's important to realize that communication is both a tool and a product of data analysis. So ultimately, when you complete a data analysis project, you're going to want to communicate your findings and your results to an audience. And so that's kind of communication as a product. But as you go through the whole process, you're going to, there's got, you want there to be constant communication and dialogue so that you can, um, you can assess findings and challenge them constantly to make sure that you get the best results that you can. So any good data analyst is going to be uh, engaged in kind of, constant, kind of regular informal communication multiple times through the data analysis process. But they're also going to keep in mind the way in which um, the kind of ultimate results can be communicated to a wider audience and to kind of think about how what's the best way to do that. And so it's important to ensure that the people in the team and the data science team or the analysts uh, stay on task with these kind of two basic communication goals. So the basic purpose of, of a routine communication is to gather information, okay? Um, and you gather information by kind of communicating your results and, and, and by kind of taking in the responses from your audience, okay? Uh, and hopefully that will inform the next steps of your data analysis. And so the form that a routine communication takes, you know, depends on the goal or what kind of information uh, needs to be collected. So for example, you might, uh, you might need an answer to a very focused and technical question. Um, it's often a, just a, a, a clarification or about the details of a data set or a model. Um, and, and you just want to gain, ultimately, you just want to kind of gather a single fact. Um, at the next level, you might want to kind of get some feedback about results that are puzzling or unexpected as you are analyzing your data set. And then in the last level, you may not have any specific question whatsoever, but you want to gather information about the overall process and get some you know, first impressions and feedback about what you're doing. Um, and so you can kind of refine your data analysis even further. And so it's important to kind of classify the purpose of a given communication and to provide the appropriate environment and audience for that communication. So just a, a few quick examples. Uh, so for example, when you're if, uh, at, at a kind of narrow level, you might want to say clarify the coding of a variable uh, because maybe the metadata is unclear. So maybe uh, if a variable is labeled zero or one, you may not know what, this, what, it, what it means by zero and what is meant by one. And so there may be a specific person that you can talk to to answer that question and the communication will be very brief and to the point okay and then the, and the answer will just be a single fact essentially at the next level you might be doing exploratory data analysis uh, and you're looking at the data and you see something that's really unexpected okay remember so as part of the EDA process you have a certain you always set your expectations for what the data should look like and then when you look at the data or if you do or if you make a plot or a table and it doesn't look like what you expected um, and you can't quite explain it, you may need to kind of communicate that to a, a person or a group of people um, in order to get some feedback or answers for, about that. And so this will t might take the form of an informal meeting with a few people um, or to, to, to present some preliminary tables or figures. Uh, and you may need to show the data in terms of um, visualizations. Um, at the highest level, uh, you may have reached a major milestone, or maybe you've kind of finally developed a primary model, uh, and you want to get some feedback on kind of what you've done so far. Uh, and, and part of this is just this idea that you always want to be checking to see you know, that you haven't missed anything. You want to be challenging your results all the time. And this may require a slightly larger audience, maybe a team meeting uh, or a group meeting, where you kind of present your results uh, and get some feedback on what you've done so far. So there are a couple of just core concepts that are important for any type of uh, routine communication that you want to think about. So the first, of course, is the audience. Uh, uh, to the extent that you might be able to control the audience that you that you um, that you present to, you want to make sure that you have the right people or the right person uh, so that you can get um, the most efficient answers uh, uh, for, to your question. So it's important to know your audience um, and, to, and make sure you got the right people in the room to kind of get the right feedback. 
The next thing to think about is is the content. Okay, so it's it's important to be to, to be prepared so that you can be focused and concise about you know what you're trying to say and what you're trying to communicate. But also it's important to kind of provide uh, sufficient information so that the audience can understand kind of where you're coming from and where you're going. Um, and so especially if you have an inter interdisciplinary type of audience, you want to make sure that everyone's on the same page at the very beginning. As far as the style is concerned, uh, I generally find it useful to avoid a lot of jargon, and, and, and because as soon as a, uh, the, the audience grows to more than just a few people, uh, it's, it's likely that different people will have different expertise and different skills, and you're not going to want to use very technical jargon that will only be understood by a small subset of people. Okay, so try to use language that will be understandable to a, a, a broader range of people, uh, and and to design your figures and tables so that people can under, pe group, pe people people with a broad background will be able to understand what's going on in those figures and tables with just a little bit of explanation. And finally, it's just your attitude uh, when it comes to communication. And it's important to have an open and collaborative attitude so the audience is fully engaged and giving you feedback and helping you out uh, with your analysis. Uh, the point is not to really to, to think about yourself as defending the analysis, but rather to kind of work to get their input so that you can do your best work. So this is, this is a basic sketch of kind of routine communication um, uh, as you're going through the data analysis process. This may be something that you kind of do uh, uh, without much thinking, but actually it's a very important part of the data analysis process. And, um, and it's important that the communication works between team members, between kind of managers and team members, and that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a continuous process to kind of get feedback and improve the quality of data analysis.